From the 1930s up to the early 1980s, EMD absolutely ruled the North American locomotive market. Their engines were everywhere. The iconic EMD 567 and 645 series were basically the heart of America's railroad transformation, from steam to diesel. And the SD40-2, powered by the 645, became such a hit that it still holds the crown as one of the most successful freight locomotives ever built. But things started to change in the 1980s. That iron grip EMD had on the market began to slip. Their production numbers tell the story perfectly, from pushing out 843 locomotives in 1981 to just 255 by 1990. It wasn't really the 710 engine's fault, but it ended up being seen as a symbol of EMD's struggle to keep up with the times. New competition, tougher environmental rules, and shifting industry demands. It was like watching a heavyweight champ lose his rhythm, just as younger, faster fighters entered the ring. Now, about the 710 engine itself. What made it different from the legendary 645? Well, EMD introduced it in the mid-1980s as a way to build on the success of the 645 series, while squeezing out better performance and efficiency. The basic architecture stayed the same, which was smart. It was already reliable. But EMD did make some key upgrades. The most important one was increasing the stroke length from 10 inches to 11 inches. That might sound like a small change, but it bumped each cylinder's displacement up to 710 cubic inches. And that's actually where the engine got its name. The 710. The EMD 710 was a fine-tuned beast built to handle whatever the rails could throw at it. Engineers gave it a stronger crankshaft and redesigned pistons to boost durability under heavy loads. It also drank less fuel than the older 645, sipped less lubricating oil, and offered a better power-to-weight ratio. That made it flexible enough to power both massive freight trains and high-speed passenger locomotives. Depending on what a railroad needed, the 710 came in several configurations, from 8 to 20 cylinders, packing anywhere from 2,000 to a mighty 5,000 horsepower. In terms of toughness, the 710 earned its stripes fast. It carried over the proven engineering DNA that made EMD engines famous for lasting decades with minimal fuss. And even though it used a two-stroke design, a setup that was starting to fall out of favor because of stricter emission rules, it still had clear advantages. Two strokes are known for delivering higher power density and being easier to maintain, which railroad mechanics loved. It was reliable, strong, and easy to work on, a combo that's hard to beat in the locomotive world. Twist. But here's where things took a wrong turn. The 710 came right after a major black mark in EMD's history, the SD50 disaster of the early 1980s. This was a locomotive that promised a lot but delivered heartbreak for railroads. The SD50 used a 16-cylinder version of the older 645 engine, but EMD tried to push it way beyond its comfort zone, aiming for 3,500 to 3,600 horsepower when the engine was never designed for that kind of stress. The result was mechanical failures, breakdowns, and a reputation hit that EMD would struggle to recover from for years. So, even though the 710 itself was a solid performer, it had to live in the shadow of the SD50's failure. By the time it rolled out, many railroads had already started looking elsewhere for more dependable options. But what exactly went wrong with these locomotives? You see, these locomotives suffered from just about every kind of mechanical failure imaginable. Crankshaft and power assembly issues, engine block cracks, electronic glitches, overheating problems, and even traction motor breakdowns. It was one disaster after another. Only 431 SD50s were built between 1981 and 1987, and many of them ended up being scrapped or rebuilt from the ground up. The damage wasn't just mechanical, it was reputational. EMD, once the gold standard for reliability, had lost the trust of the railroads. That single misstep opened the door for their biggest rival, General Electric, to move in and take the lead. GE saw EMD stumbling and wasted no time taking advantage. Their Dash 7 series, which came out in the late 1970s, hit the market with the right balance of power and modern features. But what really made GE dangerous was their business strategy. They offered better financing options, making it easier for railroads to buy their locomotives and backed it up with aggressive marketing and strong after-sales support. By the mid-1980s, GE had actually overtaken EMD in yearly locomotive sales across North America. 
a massive turning point considering EMD had dominated for almost 50 years. And while EMD was still refining its two-stroke engines, GE was already betting on four-stroke technology, the key to meeting the tougher emissions standards that were coming soon. That brings us to the biggest long-term issue for the EMD 710, the two-stroke design itself. For decades, it was one of EMD's biggest strengths, compact, powerful, and simple to maintain. But as environmental rules started tightening, what once made it great became a problem. Two-stroke engines naturally burn dirtier, making it harder to meet new emission limits without major redesigns. In a world where cleaner engines were the future, EMD's legendary two-stroke was suddenly looking like a relic of the past. Two-stroke engines have always had a bit of a double-edged reputation. They're powerful and compact, but they also tend to run dirtier than four-stroke designs. The reason lies in how they breathe. In a two-stroke setup, the exhaust gases are being pushed out, while fresh air and fuel are coming in at the same time. That overlap means some unburned fuel and oil escape through the exhaust, which naturally increases emissions. For decades, this wasn't a big deal, but as environmental standards tightened, it became a major headache for EMD. So what pushed them into a full-blown crisis? The EPA's Tier 4 Emissions Rules. These new standards demanded huge cuts in nitrogen oxides and particulate matter. Basically, the stuff that makes diesel smoke dirty and harmful. EMD poured a lot of money into research and tried several fixes for the 710 engine, like adding exhaust gas recirculation systems and diesel particulate filters. While these worked to an extent, they also made the engines more complicated, more expensive to maintain, and less appealing to operators who valued the simplicity that EMD engines were once famous for. As if the emissions problem wasn't enough, EMD faced another big blow. Fuel efficiency. Railroads started noticing that GE's locomotives were simply more economical to run. Independent tests in the US showed that GE's Evolution Series engines could deliver over 6% better fuel economy than EMD's SD70A CE units, which were powered by the 710. That difference might not sound huge at first, but when you're fueling massive locomotives that run thousands of miles every month, even a few percent means millions in savings. Fuel is one of the biggest operating costs in the industry, so even a small improvement can mean huge savings over time. For a single locomotive running tens of thousands of miles every year, GE's advantage translated into hundreds of thousands of gallons of fuel saved across its lifetime. Suddenly, even though GE's locomotives were more expensive up front, their long-term efficiency made them the smarter financial choice for many rail companies. The reason behind this efficiency gap came down to the way the two companies approached engine design. GE's four-stroke GEVU engines, developed with German manufacturer Deutz, used cutting-edge combustion technology and advanced electronic controls to fine-tune fuel injection and optimize combustion timing. In simple terms, GE's engines burned fuel cleaner and smarter. Meanwhile, EMD's 710 was still relying on its tried-and-true two-stroke setup, a design that had served brilliantly for decades but was now showing its age. There was only so much performance you could squeeze out of it before hitting a wall. All of these challenges, emission struggles, higher fuel consumption, and aging technology, started piling up on EMD. The once untouchable market leader found itself losing ground fast. By the 2000s, GE had captured roughly 60% of the North American locomotive market, leaving EMD with a fraction of its former dominance. Industry analysts pointed out how EMD's global share among U.S. builders had dropped from the healthy 41 to 49% range to significantly lower figures. It was a stunning fall for a company that once defined diesel power. What had started as small cracks in EMD's dominance during the 1980s had by the 2000s widened into a full-blown collapse, and the 710, despite its engineering strengths, couldn't stop the slide. The drop in EMD's market share didn't just hurt sales, it created a vicious cycle that was hard to escape. With fewer locomotives being sold, the company had less money to pour back into research and development. That meant while GE was pumping out new innovations and refining its engines, EMD was stuck trying to stretch its older designs further with limited resources. Things got worse when General Motors, EMD's parent company, decided to put the division up for sale. That move sent the wrong message to customers. Railroads began worrying about long-term support. Would spare parts still be available? 
Would EMD even survive? The uncertainty only pushed more buyers toward GE. Then came what many consider the final nail in the coffin. The EPA's Tier 4 Emission Standards in 2015. These new regulations demanded massive cuts in nitrogen oxides and particulate matter, and that was bad news for two-stroke engines like the 710. Meeting those limits required expensive and complicated after-treatment systems, such as diesel particulate filters and selective catalytic reduction units. EMD did try to make it work. They managed to build Tier 4 compliant versions of the 710, but the price for compliance was steep. The added systems made the locomotives heavier, costlier, and more maintenance intensive, basically wiping out the simplicity and reliability that made EMD engines famous in the first place. Meanwhile, GE had it much easier. Their four-stroke Givo engines already produced cleaner emissions naturally, so they only needed modest after-treatment tweaks to meet Tier 4 requirements. This gave GE a major advantage. Simpler compliance, lower costs, and fewer headaches for operators. By this point, the writing was on the wall. The Tier 4 rules didn't just challenge the 710. They effectively ended its reign in the North American market. What had once been a symbol of engineering excellence was now a victim of changing times, stricter laws, and an industry that had moved on. Realizing that the two-stroke 710 had reached its limits, EMD knew it had to evolve. So, in the late 1990s, they rolled out an ambitious new project. The 265H, often called the H engine. This was EMD's first serious move into four-stroke territory, a 16-cylinder powerhouse designed to deliver a staggering 6,000 horsepower and go head-to-head -head with GE's latest locomotives. On paper, it sounded like a comeback story waiting to happen. But in reality, things didn't go quite as planned. The H engine program was filled with issues right from the start. It ran rough, had reliability problems, and struggled with electronic control software. GM, EMD's parent company at the time, wasn't exactly pouring in the funding needed to fix those problems quickly. Over time, engineers did manage to smooth out many of the issues, and the engine performed fairly well in export markets. But in North America, where the competition was toughest, it never really caught on. EMD was trying to juggle improvements to the 710 while troubleshooting the H engine, and with limited resources, they just couldn't keep up with GE's well-funded, laser-focused engineering teams. Eventually, after Caterpillar acquired EMD through its subsidiary, Progress Rail, the company decided to move on completely from two-stroke engines. This led to the birth of the 1010 series, a modern four-stroke line built to meet Tier 4 standards. It was a bold step forward, but by then, GE's dominance was so deeply rooted that reclaiming a strong market position was an uphill battle. So did that mean the 710 was a complete failure? Interestingly, the story doesn't end there. While the 710 lost its foothold in the locomotive world, it continued to thrive in marine and industrial applications. Ships and stationary power systems still valued what the 710 did best, delivering massive power with incredible durability. Plus, the emissions rules in those sectors were less strict, allowing the 710 to stay relevant. In fact, it even achieved EPA Tier 4 final certification for marine use, proving that its downfall on the rails wasn't due to bad engineering. It was simply a victim of changing regulations. The EMD 710's downfall wasn't because of bad engineering. It was simply outpaced by change. This engine was a beast, strong, reliable, and compact, powering trains confidently for decades. But as railroads began chasing stricter emission standards and fuel efficiency, the 710's trademark strengths, simplicity, durability, and two-stroke muscle, started feeling outdated. Interestingly, in places untouched by those pressures, like marine or industrial setups, the 710 still ruled with its raw, unshakable power. Yet, technology wasn't the only battlefield. Money was. Locomotive sales hinge on financing and lifetime maintenance deals. And here, GE dominated. With its deep pockets, GE offered irresistible loan terms and support packages that EMD couldn't rival. For rail executives, the math was clear. GE simply made more financial sense. In the end, the 710 story became a lesson in adaptation. An engineering legend overtaken not by failure, but by a world that evolved faster than it did. So, what do you think? Was the EMD 710 just unlucky? Or did GE simply outsmart them? Share your thoughts in the comments.
If you enjoyed this deep dive, hit like and subscribe. Before you go, choose your next watch. Da, our pick, the entire history of Dutes Engines, or YouTube's personal recommendation for you.